Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, Nine Motor Gang here, and today I'll be walking you step by step how to build this drive base. This drive base is 333 RPM and it has six motors on it, two of which are 5.5 watt motors. This drive base is a flexible drive base as you can easily run this with four motors, five motors, or a six motor drive base. All of those are going to work just fine for this robot. Additionally, this robot has advanced features such as a three hole gap and using screw joints on our wheels here today. A couple of other things regarding this drive base is 333 RPM was chosen for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's what I had the materials available to do. It uses 60 tooth gears and 36 tooth gears, which all teams should have since they're not more advanced or rare like the 48 or 72 tooth gears. Additionally, this drive base uses green motors, not blue motors, and everyone has plenty of green motors. Furthermore, it uses 3.25 inch wheels, which even if you don't have any of the newer anti-static wheels, the old 3.25 inch wheels will work as well for this as they can easily use screw joints as well. And even though this drive base is 333 RPM, you should be able to take the skills that you learn from building this drive base and apply it to other drive bases. Although some of them have a couple weird catches if you still want to do three hole gap, such as needing to bevel down these gears if they're almost the same size as the wheel. Finally, a couple of things were limited on this robot design as I had limited materials to build my robot. So it's missing some of the features I would normally include such as screw joints and some of the boxing just because I didn't have those materials at my disposal. Finally, 333 is an extremely versatile ratio I would think is a good fit for new teams, not necessarily more advanced teams who are used to faster drive bases as this ratio can work with just four motors if you want to run five motor drive using 5.5 watt motors or if you want to run full six motor drive. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already in order to please the YouTube algorithm. And I'll also be uploading more videos along this robot, such as coding techniques. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those. Additionally, I'll have a special announcement about the channel at the end of the video. So make sure you stick all the way around. All right, let's get into it. So first of all, we're going to start by assembling the wheels for the drive base. Um, you're going to need four of these for this specific design. I'm using high strength 36 tooth gears and a 3.25 inch anti-static wheel. Um, the older versions of these will work as well though. So we're going to start with getting a 1.25 inch screw. Very important that you put it in through the gear. The head is going through the gear this way. Insert that into the wheel. Attach another screw. And then we're going to put some nylock nuts on the back and loosely tighten them with our fingers. Now, what I like to do to make sure that these are aligned, because as you can see, there's a fair amount of slop in between the gear and the wheel, is get a high strength shaft. And stick the high strength shaft through the wheel. So now they don't have anywhere near as much slop in between them. Now we can go ahead and tighten these. As you can see, one wheel, and we're gonna get four of these. So now that we have these two assembled, we're gonna go ahead and work on their mounting points for them. So I'm grabbing 2.25 inch screws here. These ones have a little shoulder on them, but I don't believe that Robosource sells these anymore. And we're just going to slide these into these specific two holes right here. You can kind of see, um, if you look at the notches of five, then they're just going to be in slightly. And these are on 29 hole long C channels. Um, this is just because this is the length that I had already cut, but some different lengths would work. Anything around this will work for this specific drive base. So unfortunately the camera lost focus and I'm having to re-record this. But basically once you have your screws on, you want to get nuts and tighten them down all the way. Now I'm using caps nuts for now because caps nuts are really easy to work with and I'm planning to take this robot apart as soon as I'm done recording all of the stuff for YouTube with it. But what you're actually going to want to do if you're using a competition robot is use nylock nuts instead of caps nuts on the robot. Because nylock nuts aren't going to come loose and the caps nuts eventually over time are going to come loose and your screws are going to end up wobbling around in their holes. However, the nylock nuts are quite a pain to tighten onto these. I'd highly recommend using the drill because if you don't have one, they are going to take two or three minutes to do. We're now going to go and put the bearings on the robot once these are tightened down. So these are where our wheels are going to go. And now we need the bearings in order to support where the shafts are going to go. And I'm using version two bearings for reasons that are in my bearing video, which is going to be like up there in the top right. So as you can see, there's that notch of five. I will be putting the bearing in there, putting the nylock nut in, and then I will be using a 0.375 inch screw in order to tighten these. And this would also be a good time to use your nylon nuts and nylon screws if you have them. 
And now we're just going to repeat that a couple more times with one of the bearings in that hole and another one in this hole right here. Now that we have this part done, we can get ready to put our wheels on. So this spacing is going to depend on what type of nut that you use here. Um, if you use a nylock nut versus a caps nut versus a flat nut, and there's also different thicknesses of nylon nuts, nylock nuts, sorry. As you can see, I have a thick nylock over here that should be on your right and a thin nylock over here on what should be your left. So depending on what nut you use, you're going to have slightly different spacing here, and the spacing is quite tight. For the cap set that I use, and this should be the same if you're using a thin nylock nut, is I'm going to use five eighths of an inch of spacing. So that's right here. I'm using a quarter inch spacer and a three eighths inch spacer. I'm just going to slide that right onto those screws. Next up, we're going to grab a wheel from our previous step and two of the brass inserts, and we're going to slide those in to the wheel. Now we have the wheel. We're going to just slide that right onto the shaft and that should spin quite nicely. Additionally, if you're not sure if your spacing is correct, the screw end of the screw should just barely miss hitting the flange of the C channel. If it's hitting, obviously you need to add more space. And if it's very far away, then you need to move it in a little bit more because the spacing will be quite tight on this. Additionally, if you're really just struggling to get space, I know some teams that have actually filed down the ends of their screws just to get a little bit more space if you really need to. But as long as you're following this guide and your metal isn't like severely bent, you shouldn't need to do that. Next, we're gonna repeat that with our other wheel on the other side. And now we will put a 1 8 inch spacer on the end of these. And now we can set this off to the side as we'll be coming back to that later. Now we're going to move on to the inside section of the chassis. So this is where our motors are going to be. So we need to line up the motors with the bearings and the bearings are going through these three holes. So we're going to put our motors such that they line up with those. which they'll go in like here. And then I like to use half inch screws in order to tighten these motors in. Now, because of the spacing on this drive base, it's important that you actually put in your smart cord now, as once we add in our next motor, the smart cord will, the smart port here, you won't actually be able to get your smart cord into there. So I'd recommend clicking that in now. Um, I only have very long wires available to me because the other ones are all on my actual robots, but you can definitely use shorter wires, assuming you know where your brain will be. Next up, we're gonna grab another motor, line it up with this hole, and as you can see, that gap will no longer be accessible. And these are green 200 and RPM motors, as that is the speed that will work with this drive base. If you use red motors, your drive will be way too slow. And if you use blue motors, your drive will be way too fast. Now, one of the nice things about 333 RPM is that it works well with a lot of different motor amounts. So if you are running a four motor drive, you would not continue on and add this next motor. I'm going to be using a 5.5 watt motor to create a five motor drive um, for a couple of reasons. I don't have any more of the 11 watt motors. This will, and I'm also gonna have a coding tutorial, which will be the same for six motors. Or you could also go ahead and just add a regular uh, green sixth motor onto this. Although I would re recommend running a faster ratio if you're going to be running all six all six motors on your robot. All right, so now we have this section of the drive base built, and now we can go ahead and put the gears on that will be driving um, the gear ratio. So we're grabbing these shafts. I believe these are about two and a half inches long, and you're gonna wanna put them all in the motors like this. So you kinda put them in the hole and then wiggle them around until you can't really spin them. You can kind of hear that. We're gonna repeat that with all of these.
So as I was saying, once we have our shaft in the motor, and you can see that's not spinning, then we can get a low strength 60 tooth gear. And it's important that we use a low strength gear here. It doesn't actually affect the speed, whether or not we use a high strength or a low strength gear. But since these gears are more compact, we'll be able to get a three hole gap instead of a four hole gap, which will make your robot one inch thinner overall. So now we can just kind of line these up with the motor and push that down. And as you can see, that's spinning there. And we're going to repeat that for the other motors that we have on the robot as well. Now that your gear's on, you can see they all spin together nicely. Now the order of this next part doesn't matter, but this is what I find easiest. You're going to want to put a shaft collar on each of these so that the shafts can't slide out. And then you're going to want to put spacings on these. This is a 16th inch washer followed by a one inch spacer. And you're just going to put that spacing on each of these. All right, so now this section of the drive base is going to be done. Now this is one of the trickiest parts. I would, if you have teammates, I would highly recommend getting them to help you with this, is now we have to combine these two parts of the drive base together. So usually the shafts are going to go into the bearings first. You can see they all kind of line up quite nicely. So once the shafts are in, now you kind of push it so that the screw, screws go into the holes opposite. And then it should all clink together and you can see the whole thing is working. Now this will fall apart if we don't add some bracing, so let's go ahead and do that now. At the front of the robot, we're going to have a half cut. What type of bracing you use here doesn't really matter, but I find this to be the easiest. Since this is a three hole gap, this will be a five long half cut. Although if you ended up doing a four hole gap and couldn't get this spacing to work, then you would be using a six long. As you can see, the spacing in there is quite tight, but it does work out quite nicely with a small amount of wiggle room. So since this is at the corner of the robot, it will be taking a lot of impacts. So we're going to be boxing this using 7 8 inch standoffs. A 7 8 inch of spacers will also work, but I just have to have more standoffs available with me right now. And you're just kind of going to jam these in between the C-channel flanges. You might have to bend them out if your C-channel is already bent. And then again, if you have shoulder screws, I would highly recommend using them here. But since I do not, I will just be using regular 0.375 inch screws. And now since I'm using standoffs and not spacers, these standoffs are not secured. So I'm going to have to go through and screw these in at the bottom. I would not use shoulder screws here, but any regular size screw will work. Preferably one with Loctite since these are standoffs. Now finally, we're going to put a brace at the back, and additionally, this will serve as one of our full length cross braces for the robot. So I'll be using a 26 hole long C-channel, as that is the length that I happen to have. Whatever length you actually use will depend on what other plans you have for your robot design. And again, since these are on the corner of the robot, we're going to use standoffs to box these. There we go, you can see screwing that in. Now you're not going to want to tighten this since this is the first one down all the way. Then we're going to repeat these for the other four holes that this C-channel will be going through. Again, if you have them, I would recommend using shoulder screws here. All right, so once we have those screws in place, we can now go ahead and tighten these down now that we know that it lines up. And now you're going to want to repeat this entire section. The one small change will be this cross brace will be on the top when you're doing the other side. You could have multiple people working on these in tandem if you have. And now once you have your other drive base right here, you can see they will combine together nicely. So let's go ahead and do that now. Since we use standoffs here, these are going to line up nicely at the back. Again, I would use shoulder screws if you have them available here. All right, so you can see we have those lined up. And now we can screw these together. 
and we'll repeat that for the three more holes over there, and there should be four more holes over there. All right, and now you can see these two sections of the drive base are connected with the big mess of wires in the middle. And I'm sure some of you are already seething in the comment section right now. There is no cross brace at the front of the robot because right now this whole drive can flex in and out. So in order to fix that, we're going to add a brace across the front here. So since I used a 26 hole long at the back, we will be using an 18 hole long at the front of the robot. And because most robots are going to have an intake or something, I will be doing this at the bottom. And again, I would highly recommend using shoulder screws if you have these, or either mounting this down with some spacers in that gap in there. Um, if you need this even lower down to give more room for an intake or something. This is a generalized drive base and not specific to any one game. Additionally, I used Keps nuts here in order to secure the drive base, but I would highly recommend using Nylock nuts if you have those available. Like I said with the screw joints earlier, I'm not actually planning to keep this robot together for any length of time, so I don't care if it falls apart on me tomorrow, because it'll probably be taken apart tomorrow. Here we go, and now we have a nice drive base. Now we have a nice drive base. Base. Also, another important thing, do not forget to tighten your shaft collars or the gears will fall out of your robot. Um, so don't, don't forget to tighten the shaft collars. All right, so once you have your shaft collars tightened and the shafts don't fall out once you move the robot sideways, now we have our robot completed. I'll be uploading a video shortly in which I go ahead and attach the electronics to this and have multiple c coding tutorials to do with this robot, um, including from how to write a drive code for a six motor drive to more advanced topics such as PID and odometry. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those. So starting today, the Nine Motor Gang channel will have access to memberships, which is gonna be this little join button right here. And the memberships, they're gonna have like some random emojis. I'll probably add some more. These ones are popular in robot notebookers, so I figured I'd add them. And there's also gonna be some member only videos um, they're just going to be like some silly stuff um, and maybe like some robot teasers. I'm not going to like paywall any like exclusive reveals or robot explanations because like that would be bad. And then I'll probably have early access to some of my non-time sensitive videos. So manual updates are still going to be live as soon as like they're done. But also some of the other videos, the longer ones especially, um, YouTube wants to like process them to make sure that they're like ad friendly. So I'll have the membership up like as soon as it is uploaded to YouTube before they even finish processing it. And then some of my other random videos, like the standoff axle or random things like that, those will probably be just on the membership for a couple of days before they go fully public. And I expect like three of you guys to sign up, but it's an option. Additionally, depending on how well this does, I might look into the options for a YouTube store and getting some merch. And also if you see me at a competition, be sure to come by and get some free stickers because I do have those now. Thanks for sticking around to the end, and I will see you in the next video.